working out of a car park to realise the exhibition was in many ways a love letter to my youth. As a student, I used to sit with friends at void decks, car parks, underneath overhead bridges, have beers and talk to the morning about ideas and everything that we wanted to be in the years that were to come. For this edition of the festival, I really wanted to work with individuals who I admired a lot, individuals who I felt would come together with a spirit of teamwork and camaraderie. It was very, very heartening to see that sense of fellowship really emerge in the development of the show. I had come across a quote that talked about how if we're fortunate enough, it is better to build a longer table than to build a taller fence. This work is Sama Sama, which is a Malay term that has a few meanings. One of which is, you're welcome. It also means we're the same and a sense of togetherness, Lucy. So I thought it would be nice to have this space uh, an installation and performance activation that would allow for people to gather and share stories about um, our relationships to food. And so for me, it is a way of resurfacing lost knowledge or rather uh, bringing to the forefront a number of um, traditional wisdoms that may have been forgotten. My inspiration beside promoting craft and tea culture in a contemporary art setting is the main concept is about you know in our busy work life uh, we spend a lot of time working and neglect a lot of stuff especially the loved one so the installation is about taking a break from our busy life sit down have a cup of tea some small conversation and talk about what we miss in life and how we're going to treasure it. And then we turn it down on a carrot coffee, Chinese ink paper, and hang there. It's like, the artwork is not, it's not just mine, it's, it's a contribution of the participant too. For this festival, the work that I'm presenting is called Chen Tian, or Found on Paper, Made in Minds. So it's actually a pun on the Chinese word Chen Tian, which means um, sediments, but also dust and Tianzi, which is to think of. Yeah, so um, these are actually images that are collage from scores that I've kept and accumulated over the past 19 years. I enjoyed spending a lot of time with the work, almost like cloud spotting for patterns within these scores. And then the audio component, which I did with a friend, um, we're improvising and responding to these images. And the whole time is about, it's always reimagining, remembering things that are from our life. So I hope that playfulness and that whimsical like I towards the everyday and things around us is something that people can walk away with. So this work that I'm presenting for the show is titled Rearrange the World. It is a work that um, thinks about rearranging the world uh, as a way to think about changing it. I work with uh, different mediums every time. Uh, I try to use a medium that I'm unfamiliar with. So the two hands, they would create different configurations from these three vessels, a cup, a bottle, and a can. Um, and with that, you will see different words, words that you teach to children. Um, simple words and also some more complicated uh, and some rather political words. I was trying to get at something quite elemental and quite elementary actually that is maybe more linked to the human experience. The inspiration behind the work um, was an investigation of sorts for me to unpack the sentimentalities um, that are engraved within surfaces and Pake was that material which I wanted to kind of explore to understand how the queer body navigates uh, space and their relation towards um, the domestic and the materials in which the body comes into contact with. For me, I've been very fortunate um, and privileged in a sense to be able to explore my identity and curiosities within a safe space. Um, 
and understanding that that is not always the case for many individuals. And as such, my work is, in a sense, is this embodied object of trust, sentimentality. This work is a site-specific uh, installation uh, entitled Centerpiece. So it's actually a chandelier that is hung under a ladder and with a mic catching up any of the environmental sounds and feeding back through a drone. It's meant to be a grotesque analogy towards um, symbols of luxury, elitism, and, and all this is accumulated through the wealth and effort through of others. So I decided to make this work after my experiences with growing an illegal garden near where I lived and my subsequent journey with the local authorities in my area and how I had to eventually uproot my own garden. I decided to make this video and how to guide out of a place of frustration and also hopefully a way for people to learn from my mistakes. These logs were collected from Lantau Forest that was deforested near my house. They were deforested because they crossed this like boundary that they were supposed to clear that it was going to be um, a future condo development. I just stared at it for many, many weeks and then I was like, no, you know, like I, I felt so, I don't know, you could say like heart pain for the state that it was in and I, I collected them from um, on top of the hill at the forest. I think to, to everyone, when they see German trees and um, these trees, it may mean very, very different things to each of them. Some may just see it as a dead object, some people might animate some of the figures and geometries that they see um, to the extent of having characters and a soul that lives within it. The inspiration for this piece was largely driven by uh, my soon to need to BTO. And um, I've been working around this area called the Tengah Forest for a number of years. A lot of my previous works all de were derived from the activities that were happening in that area. I think in Singapore we are very unique in the nation because we are not big enough to negotiate around like issues of forests or forestations, um, where we are constant negotiation between how much green is left over at the same time with construction works as well. I think it's really important to think about um, between this negotiation, where does this identity of a city in nature lie? Um, particularly, especially if this is an identity that we hold so true to. I think we had conceptualised the festival to be as welcoming as possible for as diverse a demographic as possible. Of course, the season art audiences would tease out more nuance than the amateur. The festival is also an invitation to our art audiences to think harder about the context in which art is being made and presented in Singapore. We do have a lack of purpose-built buildings in this country supporting the presentation of art. And in that respect, a car park is not so novel as compared to presenting art in the former Supreme Court. I hope that the audiences who come into the festival are able to embrace it as an authentic and sincere presentation of their artist's own visions, dreams and desires. I think the festival is rich in its range of ideas in its execution in the different ways in which art is engaged with the different mediums. I saw people taking photos of my photos and that, that always uh, you know, makes me laugh in a, in a good way because uh, I guess they must see something in the image and I'm interested to see or to know what they feel that is so compelling that they have to take a photograph of it. Uh, maybe there is something that, that catches their imagination and makes them look at a situation differently and uh, if that's the case, then I think I've succeeded. 
one of the visitors told me about my work was that um, it kind of reminded him that it referenced to uh, Gopal Kun's, uh, the, the play that Gopal Kun wrote uh, called The Silly Little Girl and The Strange Old Tree. And I've been thinking of that comment ever since because I thought it was so apt. I'm also that silly little girl trying to carry so many like tree logs down the hill just to salvage it because, because of their love for it and to make something out of it. Instead of providing light in the darkness, a lot of artists add darkness upon darkness. And then all this anger and frustration, complaints, Personally, I don't think that should be the case. To me, art should not, in the darkness, bring some hope to people, let people see some light. I think art is something that is inherently quite silly. It has no practical purpose, but yet we are enriched for the better with its existence. And there are times when I question to myself, what am I doing? But whenever someone sees a work that I've made, and I see them smile or contemplate, I think it's all worth it. I think I came right at the kind of tail end of this momentous institution. I think I'm just fortunate enough to have been selected to be part of this exhibition and to be under the guidance and curatorship of John Tung and to have worked alongside Yvonne as well. When I was in Singapore in the mid-90s as a young researcher doing my master's thesis, it was really my home away from home. That in the day I'd be at the library and then in the evenings I'd be at the Kopitiam hang out with the substation gang. So it was a, a lovely gesture I thought if I could in my little attempts to bring people together, hold space and have that sharing of um, what a community of sorts could be. I hope that with the presentation of the festival, we successfully keep the substation spirit of the alternative and experimentation alive. I do hold the words of the late theatre Do Yen and founder of the substation, Ho Pao Kun, very close to my heart. Especially the line in which he says that a good failure is better than a mediocre success challenging stereotypes and bridging pathways to new communities to welcome more people to see what art has to offer beyond merely being entertainment into a new way of living and how they can potentially shape our futures as well. Ready? Three, two, one!